So first of all, there are two collections of watercolor pencils and I've just put the backs of the uh, containers there so you can see the colors. I won't list them all out. But this was the original collection and that has 13 pencils in it. And then they added a collection two which contains 10 pencils. And, and if you're gonna get only one, I would recommend this first one because one has more pencils in it, but it's got the brown, the gray, the black, and the white. So it's got those neutrals that I think you'll need, but you can watch what we're gonna do tonight and then decide. And then this one is just a complementary to the original one. Okay, then a few things before we start. When you use watercolor pencils, and you want to color something that you've stamped, I would recommend that you use Stays On. This is an alcohol-based ink, and so it's permanent, which means you can get it wet and color and um, use water, and these won't bleed. So currently, we carry those in two colors. We have them in the jet black and in the saddle brown, which is kind of a bronzy brown color. The other option you have is to use your embossing powders and stamp your images in Versmark and then uh, cover them with embossing powder and heat them. And that seals the outline so that it won't bleed when it's, um, when you use water with your coloring. Then the other thing is the paper that you use. Uh, you may wanna use watercolor paper, sorry, or shimmer white because they can accept water a little easier. You can use basic white. You just need to be careful not to use too much water with it. And then the last thing to go over is when you use your pencils, you will want to uh, move the ink or spread the ink. Uh, and I'll show you how that works. So you have two choices. You can use a water painter, which has actual water in the barrel that you refill, or you can use a blender pen, which has a solution in here and I don't know exactly what it is but it's not just water so if you're not using stays on for your ink like a what you said you're using a water-based ink you might be able to get away with it if you use the blender pen rather than actually putting water on it but I would recommend that you just experiment a little bit with that and I have done some videos explaining the differences of the inks and things so that might be helpful to find as well Okay, so let's look at some coloring techniques. So our first one is I'm gonna just make a little tag with you using the Joyful Life stamp set. And the first way you can use your, your pencils is you can just add some color to the image and then spread the color with your blender pen or, or water painter. So you can see this little hedgehog here. Where those lines are, you can just add some pencil marks. And I'm going quite heavy, and I'm not actually exactly following those marks. You could, but it's not really necessary. But you see where I'm just putting some little hash marks there. And then you can use your aqua painter. As soon as you hit that watercolor pencil with water, it's very soft pencil and it just melts, for lack of a better word, it just dissolves, I guess is probably the proper word, dissolves right away. And so it looks like you have watercolored or painted it, but you've actually used a pencil. Now I'm just gonna go a bit darker on his little feet here. And of course you can just use it as a pencil if you want, if you just wanna have a like a, an image that looks like you've pencil colored it in. And then another way you can use it is just by, I mean, use the pencils, is just by scribbling a little bit. So if you just take your pencil and just lightly scribble in through the image, and I would recommend that you very lightly scribble because if you press too hard, it actually kind of makes an indentation in your paper. You may have discovered this when you, you know, used pencils and things when you were in primary school. So you just want to very lightly color and then again, go back with your aqua painter or your blender pen and just move that ink. So it doesn't look like pencil scribbles anymore. It looks like you have watercolored it. If anyone has any tips um, you want to share or any questions as we go along, please do. And I will just color in 
I'm going to go around the edge. This is another way you can use it. You can just go around the edge of your image like that. Hopefully you can see that. It's very tiny on my screen. So you've got a dark edge and then you'll just take your coloring medium and just bring that pencil in through the middle. So it's kind of going to be darker around the edge and lighter in through the middle. I'll just add a little green on that leaf. because Leaves probably need to be green. I'll just add a bit of color in here on the fruit. We'll make these peaches. Oh, there was one other way you can use it. And take your blender pen or aqua painter and just pick up color directly from the tip. And then you can just color that on. Now you'll get a lighter color doing it that way, but that's all right. Cause like, for example, on his face, I do want a lighter color. And maybe if I want a little bit of gray just down here below underneath him, you just want a little bit of light color. Okay, so that's three ways you can use your watercolor pencils as far as coloring. And here's another sample I did using that Joyful Life stamp set. Um, same techniques, um, just some different color, different colorway and made it into a full card. And I added a little bit of that shimmer crystal effects onto the apples. Then the next thing I want to show you is creating a landscape or kind of a background. For our landscape colors, you could do any colors you want. I think I'm going to do, I'll do like blues and greens for this one. How about these ones? Maybe dump something like that. Okay, so what you want to do here is again, not use the tip because you don't want to actually create an, a physical indentation in the card. You just want it to be fairly soft. So I'm just going to use like the side of the mark, uh, not the marker, the side of the pencil and just scribble on there. Okay, and then I'll use my Bermuda Bay. And don't worry that it's quite messy. And then this is Old Olive. And then down here at the bottom, we'll do our gorgeous grape. All right, then we'll take our water painter. And this time I'm gonna use my really thick water, paper, water painter, sorry. See how quickly and easily that pencil just, just melts. Well, it doesn't actually melt, but you know what I mean, dissolves and then just keep going. And the important thing I found is right where they join, make sure that you get a good blend there so it doesn't look harsh. And then you might even wanna go back up. And then you'll get this beautiful background sort of landscape look. And of course, depending on which colors you use, you could use all really similar colors, but it's a really quick way to create a background and here is a project that I finished using that technique, but this time I used more of the oranges and the purples and things. And then just stamped over it with black and kept it quite simple otherwise because I wanted that focus to be on the background. So hopefully you like that too. Then, this is personally for me, one of the main reasons why I like the watercolor pencils is a lot for this one here, the white pencil because now with this, you can quite easily color on your colored cardstock and get a white look. So I'm putting espresso and uh, Daffodil Delight in the middle. And then I'm just gonna take my water painter and blend those two colors out. So you get this really great um, two colors in there, but they're all blended together. And then I'm gonna take my white pencil and you can see already how well that colors on the uh, cardstock. One thing about red, and I'm, I'm not saying we won't do red, I'm just saying for you to know, always when you have a technique that uses water, it's very difficult slash almost impossible to get a true rich red because obviously a watered down red is, is actually pink. So you'd get kind of that sort of a look. To get a really true red, you'd need to use your markers. So we've got cherry cobbler or red. We'll go with the real red. So you can see I've done white through most of it and left just a little bit at the tip. And I'm just gonna take my mark, or not my marker, my pencil and just do a little bit of red at each tip. Now, depending on the color, 
kind of lets you know how much you need like a really dark color like say gorgeous grape you might just need like a little dot of color so we'll see what this looks like it's just a matter of experimenting so then what I'm going to do is take my water painter and start with the red and just bleed that down and kind of blend out that white as well. All right, so hopefully you can see that where the flowers have just that little tip of red, but it's not a harsh line because I've, I've blended it out. And the white pencil is really great even for like um, if you wanted to mix it with another color to make that color less intense. Okay, so let me show you a finished sample that I'm really happy with. This is probably my favorite of the ones I played around with. Um, this one with the, I actually use that with, if you can believe it, I'm not joking, I used that with uh, Melon Mambo and white, but by the time it was, you know, diluted and mixed with the white, it actually looks more purple to me. So again, you just have to experiment and see what, um, you know, what, what it's gonna look like, especially when it's on top of crumb cake or a gray or something like that. It will change the color, how the colors work together. So this one I didn't make, and I'm not even positive that that's pencils, but I think it is. It's so you can see it's a white flower and it's just got some little bits of yellow spread in there in the middle, just getting that little bit of color. And I don't know who made that one. It doesn't have a name on it. Then here is one that I did make, and this one um, I have heat embossed the girl outline. This is from my Beautiful Moment stamp set, and heat embossed that to um, make it waterproof, and then just used the white and the pink markers to make a really light colored dress there. And then this one is again also stamping with white embossing and then using the white pencil and colored pencils so that I could color right on the uh, crumb cake card stock. And that's also the beautiful moment stamp set. And then this one I played around with today and this one was quite fun using a new stamp set that's coming next week called Nature's Harvest. Sorry, I had to look. And this one I have stamped with this one, the Saddle Brown stays on. So as you can see, it's a much softer look than the black and uh, suitable for certain ones, certain um, projects. And the fun thing though, is I've actually stamped and colored on our linen paper, which is actually fabric, very, very thin fabric. So that was fun to play around with that. Um, so when you are stamping on fabric, you definitely need to use the stays ons, but it did work coloring on it with the pencils as well. Okay, so if you have any questions or comments or other tips that I didn't get, go over, please feel free to leave them. I always appreciate your contributions and I appreciate you being here with me tonight. Good night.